Welcome gamers to this week's episode of Last Call Gaming. We're on episode number 48. My name is Craig Prowse and Muscle Man himself joining me, Mr. <laughs> Montemayor, <laughs> and a special guest, Gino Prowse, my brother and yours. <laughs> Prowse? Did I catch you off guard on that one? How you yeah. doing, boys? <laughs> what happened? Oh, nah, I just started laughing. I was trying to think of something to say to Gino, but... Too much Blue Moon in? Yeah. Uh, so this, guys, if you're looking at it, is the PS5... Future of Gaming reveal that they did today. Uh, we all watched it. So that is why all three of us are on here talking about it. Now, if you want to go check this thing out, it's it's got a lot to it. There's a lot of games to watch. It. What we're going to do is kind of hit the highlight on the games that caught our eye the most. Kind of what we normally do. Kind of go over them. Tell you a little bit about them. But before we do that, I got to say that we are getting some very good digital uh, presentation that one in, was great yeah in, in loom of not having an e3 or any of these big things so before we dive into the games i mean overall thoughts of how sony delivered the probably the most highly anticipated um uh digital conference of maybe all year i thought it was great uh there's maybe like two to three games where i was like ah, oh, the they're not for me i just i'm like ah, oh, this kind of sucks but the only other thing i would have liked and it's just because i would like to see is the price but i wasn't expecting that to be here so this is one of the things where coming second really comes into play because they ba- Xbox got a backlash of what they had done. Everybody said more gameplay, more. You got gameplay almost every single game. There's like two that maybe were just trailers. That was the benefit of going second. They got to look at all the crap. They really, really delivered on this one. I would say that presentation even still just for I, I forget the guy's name. I think it's like Jim Ryan or something like Daniel, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, like just he looked a lot better than like whatever. I, you know, Xbox is, oh, I'm crawling out of bed in my pajamas with what I, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I think one of the more tight-knit things that Sony has definitely showed over this thing is that they, like Jim was saying, they, they, they learned a lesson and they didn't, there was no stumbling in the gate. It, after it showed a trailer, there was maybe a little Sony thing and then it went to the next one. Then mm-hmm. it maybe did an interview with the creator or a CEO or somebody, you know, telling a little bit about the game, saying what's coming in, what's coming out. And it just moved right on to the next one. So in an hour and a half or so of gameplay trailers and, and light conversation, I mean, you've got about almost 30-something games cat. out of this thing. So um, I do want to say that if you are someone that's you know, missing E3, and it is kind of funny to note that this would be the last day of E3 on the calendar year. Yeah. We oh, were yeah. in 2020. So it is kind of um, funny that Sony is showing this big one on a day where most of us would have been looking forward to content, and Sony really knocked it out of the park so let's start off with and we're gonna go chronologically so if you are watching it the link will be in the description um we're gonna hit it in the order of what we thought stood out the most so um the the ps the gta 5 thing i'll type lightly on that they were saying that any day one gta um, 5 on ps5 is going to get the um, grand theft auto online and then ps4 members currently are getting the 1 million, one million. every month or yeah something like that until, until, launch. until launch so if you're a rockstar fan you're a gta fan Jump on that. I don't think there's really much yeah. else to say. They're kind of straightforward yeah. with that. Dude, those numbers, uh, that game's a juggernaut, dude. Yeah. So the big one, though, when they started off right off, the, even though it was a little teaser, was they were showing uh, the new Insomniac Spider-Man game, Miles Morales. You guys saw it. It was quick. It was furious. Uh, initial thoughts. I didn't even think they would show a Spider-Man that soon. I think a lot of people didn't. Yeah, so that's what caught me off guard. So I thought it was absolutely great. looks pretty cool. And again, especially coming off that heat of... Um, into the Spider Verse with Miles Morales uh-huh. too. That I felt like yeah. that was the perfect something, and maybe it's not even a sequel because they might be like reusing whatever assets, like a Link, a Green of Time, Majora's Mask style thing, before they go technically into Spider Man too. No, I, I really liked it. Uh, it's one of my son's favorite movies, so I know he's gonna be super excited to to watch me play that because he loved the first one. Uh, I love the exhibit of his powers, the electricity. It's a whole new good version of this generation's kind of spider-man because the last movie was so good for it to come off the coattails um it looked amazing yeah, yeah. Well, it has a 2020 re- release yeah, yeah. That, that was the biggest thing because what, what's interesting is um but sony just bought this in 2019 and spider-man has a fun note of being the fastest selling ps4 game of its time so the fact that they're already putting out this game at the end of the holiday season uh just shows that man this game's gonna steamroll and it just makes me think that they're probably building a lot of what they already had on the original Spider-Man and then just kind of, you know, substituting uh, the Miles Morales combat play and we're going to see that and, dude, right, 20 coming out at the end of this mm-hmm. year. That's what I was saying. Maybe they took that Zelda approach and just reused kind of a lot of the yeah. stuff because they already had a great a product and changed what needed to be changed before we get to the next generation. Yeah, and so. we, I mean, we've got to, there's going to be more trailers. So that was just the first of many. And moving into the next game that they had was... Um, Ratchet and Clank by the same studio, Insomniac Games, Rift Apart. Um, you played 
uh, Ratchet and Clank before I did. I mean, that was a really good exclusive game that came out, um, what, 2017, whatever it did? Right around there. It, when I, I'm a mainly an Xbox person. My girl bought me a PlayStation 4. I, I, I played a few games. Ratchet and Clank was one of the ones that really stood out to me. It was like 10 to 12 hours. Remember, we were <laughs> talking about the last boss. Like, it's a solid game, and it looks so much better on the PS5. Um, the, the going through the universes was really cool. They showed a different version of Ratchet. There was a lot of cool stuff that seems that was going to happen. My only thing is, I hope the story's fluid enough to where you get what's going on because he's passing through a lot of worlds. There's a lot of new right. kind of stuff going on. I, I was just really impressed by it. It seemed like there's like a million particle effects on there, especially mm -hmm. when he's smashing on the bushes. All the leaves are breaking out apart individually. I think what's maybe one of my most impressive things that I've seen through a lot of these is I don't remember seeing a single loading screen today. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're in that time. It's a thing of the past. That's that a good time. thing to say yeah. right now. And um, I do like that um, they're doing Ratchet and Clank in that kind of interdimensional travel. And I got to say, that's probably it was probably one of the better looking games that we actually got to see. There's a lot of good looking stuff, but that one kind of showed off it, what... Yeah, it looked really good. I don't know what broke the timeline. Right? <laughs> Something I mean, did. Um, before we move any further, because I think you wanted to touch gently on Gran Turismo 7. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Uh, neither of us are huge racing fans. We did want to bring it up, though, because... Actually, when they showed that, I thought it was absolutely gorgeous, and that's just kind of wanted to hi highlight on because they were showing everything, all the dynamic lighting, just all the different tracks and everything, but just every aspect of that game, like, even just the driving and everything like that, it was all gorgeous. Yeah, what you was could, the little thing they had in the reverse? Was it a phone, or was it part of the oh, actual I don't know if it was, like, a car. phone or, like, a screen in the dash or something that showed, like, the reverse, but, like, in real time, though, that's still... And granted, games did that before, but it just, with high how high the fidelity was, it looked... You know, beautiful. You could totally see where the ray tracing and the dynamic light is going to come through on a game like this. And we're not racers, like you said. But this is a game where if you actually had one of those racing wheels in a, in a set, it looks fun. Oh, man. Like, yeah, just seeing the hands like, very, when, very when they're good. switching gear. I, I, I want to do that now. <laughs> yeah, right. right? Um, so let's move on to the next uh, game that they showed off was Project Athea. Uh, this was weirdly worded, designed exclusively for the PC or uh, the PS5. But I am. I was reading articles that it is going to show up on the PC. But that looked like a really good game. Yeah, it's a design exclusively on PS5. On the PS5. So who knows if that means just they designed it on that, and then maybe they're porting it off to other stuff or whatever. But it's using that Luminous engine, which um, mm -hmm. I think Final Fantasy 15 had used, and also previously um, the. Pro uh, I forget what the other project was when they had first showed off the engine at the start of this generation cycle and i really thought uh agnes philosophy right, right. was mm -hmm. that other demo that i really thought when they were showing something that that's kind of what it was going to be and it almost kind of seems like it in a way a beautiful game though yeah there was like three or four games that stood out that i would play even if they didn't show gameplay just a trailer this one just seemed like one, one of, them, of them yeah just the fantasy world aspect of it it just it immediately drew me to it right because yeah, this so is was... the square enix game yes mm -hmm. yes and this was the team that i think they were saying broke off from the ff15 and then formed this team and i think this is going to be their first main big game so yeah that looked really cool anything else on that i don't think that it's a final fantasy because i mean it's uh, no 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 it was a, it was part of the team that made ff15 that Breakaway broke off team. to make oh, yeah, a new no, I, team to do this this new game yeah no them. i i was looking at comments i've seen other people saying like oh this is gonna be a weird final fantasy i don't think it's final yeah, fantasy. Yeah, i think it's that. just something completely yeah, different from the from some of the guys that did some of the old so just wanted to throw that out yeah. there yeah uh the other game from uh house marquee i believe was that game returnal now if you were watching this this easily kind of looked like I don't want to say a ripoff, but like an um, like Edge of Tomorrow, the oh, game where you was live, was... die, repeat, and it's kind of started off like that. I'm like, okay, we're just gonna see cinematics, but once it started actually getting into the gameplay, like she's got a lot of cool looking guns, you know, it kind of showed that the world's actually digging into her psyche. So it's probably gonna be a lot of um, mind breaking stuff that you're seeing flashbacks from maybe a past to now. But overall, I mean, a cool looking space game for with with that kind of concept. This is kind of where it said too, where the 3D audio that the controller and everything and the headset is gonna is a big part of that game. Right now, how much it seemed like that'd be a pretty cool aspect to jump into. I really actually just like the name. The game really looks cool. I was I, it. I was like, I don't think you could have said Returnal. It really grew on me, and I really hope that uh, Doom steals it. 
and they create like an HD version of Doom Eternal and call it Doom Returnal for the PS5 the and the DLC Xbox Series Eternal, Ret- Eternal Returnal. <laughs> Doom Eternal Returnal. Uh, so that looked good. Um, an action, you know, was an action kind of uh, oriented game. So check that Third one out. Third person um, guns. I mean, it looked yeah, it looked a lot of cool solid. looking weapons. And obviously, when you can get into storylines that deal with psyche, it means that it's gonna at least focus on the narrative. So it's not just gonna be action run through. It's gonna be a storyline that you're actually gonna wanna pay attention to and hopefully they deliver um the other game i mean i thought maybe almost stole the show for me uh was by media molecule and this was Sackboy big adventure look great yeah initial thoughts guys when you took a peek at this i almost felt like it was almost taking a page out of like those mario games once it started hitting the aspects of like okay you're playing with friend i, I would have to assume it's friends unless you're controlling four or three different sack people right. but it looked just like playing as much fun as playing a mario game when you're all just Going through a level sideways, dodging all the shit and everything. Your friends are dying, but you're still trying to beat the level for everyone. I thought it looked absolutely fun. Yeah, I put a couple notes. Because it didn't specifically say if it was one to four players multiplayer. You would assume it was. Yeah, it I think like, I just remember saying co-op. It looked like some racing stuff. Um, I just put good couch co-op. It, as soon as that game popped, it, it was a breath of fresh air. I was like, wow, this game. I remember Sackboy. Um, the colors, the puzzles look good. The level design looked really interesting. Um, it's one of the ones I'm going to play. Yeah, look, it's definitely what Media Molecule is up their wheelhouse. It's definitely a game we all knew was coming. It's one of those things where Sony is kind of more known to do kind of these darker <coughs> tones and kind of more grittier games. The fact that they can make a game just as colorful and look just as enjoyable as a Nintendo 64 Mario mm-hmm. game, I was almost like, well, wow, there you go. Because everything about that looked fantastic. That is how 3D platforming should be done, mm-hmm. and it doesn't look like they're going to let us down with that. Right, so. no, I thought that one looked great. Uh, the next big game I know that you, uh, Andrew, were really liking was by Ember Lab. They were showing off was, if I'm saying it right, Kena or Kenna, uh, Bridge of Spirits, third-person action-adventure game. Uh, what stood out to you with it? I, I thought it was a beautiful-looking game, and I really loved the art direction. I was kind of telling them, too, it almost really, I if it if it was done correctly, just a little bit more tweak, I think it could have been maybe that more... 3D of like a uh, like a Princess Mononoke or something right. like that, and so that's kind of like a vibe I was really feeling off of it. So I thought it looked beautiful. It looks like a, a that just that aesthetic that it has going on for it really sunk me in. Yeah, I mean it, it looked like the game that was one of the three of the four that I really do want to play. It looked like she was kind of definitely defending the forest because you saw a boss get beaten and it turned from black back to lush. The little creatures that she was with, I wonder how big of a part that's going to play with it. Almost um, like Pikmin. Yeah, yeah. Know, that's, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking of the vibe too. I got, so I don't know if they're going to help you build stuff. Um, but it sounded like Rassal Ghoul is narrating that, and I love <laughs> that even better. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. um, so moving on, guys, the, a game I know Andrew's been dying to get his hands on with Ghostwire Tokyo. Now, we've talked about this game in past episodes, but at the time, we saw light trailers about it, mm-hmm. and nothing really showed the gameplay. This thing, as short as it was, and it's coming out in 2021, kind of just hit that action gameplay where you're showing the powers, you're showing the concept of, you know, um, almost like eth- ethereal mixing in with uh, with modern day, and they're grabbing each other, kind of phasing in and out. Um, I know it grabbed your attention. Yeah, I thought that one actually looked really great. I thought it was actually a lot more action oriented from what it seems so far Mm -hmm. than what I was really picturing for the game, especially with Shinji Mikami coming off of like the Evil Within or Resident Evil known for that kind of slower pace for. But I think what I really like the most about it too is a lot of the attention to detail. So when the guy's attacking, like when he does the explosions, he's doing like the weird like finger bang thing. But then we see it's almost it was almost like Naruto when he switched to other stuff. You do like the different hand signals and stuff like that. Like he was doing like the ceiling jutsus whenever he was doing, and, and I actually really caught my yeah. Attention. So that's yeah, that's weird that you said that. Cause I almost said that earlier too. I was like, so that's exactly what caught my attention. And ghost and just. Yeah, I was like, oh, it was just almost like he was using jutsus, yeah, and so that exactly was really cool. So <laughs> yeah, because I almost looked at it when we first watched the old trailer was almost kind of like a slower detective solving you know, ghost kind of game. What's going on in this world? But no, no, you're gonna be bullying through this thing, kicking ass, and apparently doing. Ninjutsu it, it, <laughs> The vibe I got, man. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, kudos on them. That looked uh, really good, and I'm glad they showed us something because the next game we want to talk about is another game that we know is going to be um, an exclusive, I believe, day one for the PS5 that when we originally saw the trailer, it was cinematic in scope, and it didn't really show anything off outside of maybe looking like of like a Final Fantasy game, armor and swords, right, or, or Dark Souls, where we kind of seen this this aesthetic. But the new Godfall trailer uh, by Counterfall Games and Gearbox, it's coming out in 2020, finally showed off some of its combat. And I gotta say, for as fast paced as it looked, 
I am not. That's definitely gonna be a day one PS5 game when we get it. So it, very fluid combat. I mean, the the trailer looked good. The gameplay looked just as good. I didn't realize it was as much as the armor being a big part of it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Skip through, but it looked amazing. I liked seeing some of the different styles too because it actually showed off some of the different like. Um, I think someone was using a sword, but the one that really caught my attention was it looked like they were using like a longer spear. Right. So their hits were like a lot more like slower, but in a stride. And so I was like, oh, that's really cool too. I like the just variation of gameplay for that. Yeah. So, I mean, this is definitely going to be um, Sony's kind of groundbreaker game for the PS5. It's the game that they're saying, you know, this is where we're kind of hitting the ground and running mm-hmm. with it. So the fact that we finally get to see some good combat on, you know, if you like that genre, it there's nothing bad to, to, to talk about it. It looks fun. And it looks um, bright and it looks vibrant and like he was saying, you know, the armor and all that stuff's gonna gonna take away from this. So they know it's gonna be a good yeah, game. Yeah, definitely it, looking I mean, forward it looks to that. Solid. Uh, the last game that I thought, or not last game, the game next is um, that kind of starts off slow. You're not really sure where it's going. Was I think we all kind of thought it was uh, the Little Devil Inside, a Neo Stream game, an old school game that I, I think was originally supposed to come out in 2016. It was a Kickstarter game, which is now finally ready to come out, and I don't even know how to really. Describe this game. I mean, it's... Uh... It, yeah, it's really weird. Um, I really... I, I mean, a beautiful design, especially... Right, like, interesting re- choice. The one that got me the most is like that weird big like cat boss that was like oh, in the yeah, background yeah. or whatever. Like that one looked really cool. And so I don't really know like how that game is going to function, but I, I think it looks beautiful. It almost reminds me like of Limbo in terms of how you got to go through certain puzzles and do some hiding, but then it just totally flips itself on its head with this 3D action combat that right, able to yeah. do and taking mm-hmm. on these bosses and he's got this pistol and this you know this whip and he's and he's chasing a bear and shooting it. So yeah, there was just looks, looks very interesting. It's just so much that I don't know if there's like a singular way to describe it. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't compare it to anything. It, I mean, it kind of. Not the game play exactly, but it kind of gave me a brother's feel. Like, he started out small, and he's going through this stuff. And the scope of it was was all... He went to a bunch of different areas. There was right. snow. There was tundra. Uh, there was a forest. He was in the desert. He was riding sand penguins. And then you go that from the cool. monsters like that to the big cat creature. And so it just seems like there's um, stuff that could be normal, but there's stuff that's definitely out of his element. So, I, I mean, it just looked very good. Out of all three to four that I said stood out, that was the number one to me. Oh, that's was it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. That, I thought that, that might have been a surprise out. hit. It had enough interesting stuff in it that were like no matter what I'm going to play that game yeah no I thought that one was that absolutely was my, great that was my number one game. excellent I know um, Andrew this is the one you've been wanting to talk about the uh, Demon Souls so we know it, it's going to be a remaster walk us through a little about what's going on with it and, and Look good. why it's only coming on Sony I, I just kind of wanted to gloss over because they didn't really show too much they just showed kind of bulletarian yeah, like and then an they outfit. showed like the, an undead or you know whatever they want to call them for you know whatever and of course it is going to be remastered made by Blue Point and again, this game originally was um, published by Sony in um, Japan and then Atlas in America. And uh, Ban- uh, Namco Bandai owns the IP for this game. So I don't know that this game is... Uh, I I hope it's not an exclusive. I, would, I guess I maybe think that it would. I don't know how remasters work. But maybe it might be in the same vein as like why you know we have Final Fantasy X and right, you know seven over. and those because it's not the original it's a remaster or something so who knows how that works either way crazy excited for it because I love anything Souls related so I think this game's absolutely something that needed it too because Demon Souls is you know super old it was a lot niche then when it came out <laughs> grew big and of course everyone knows now that that grew into the Dark Souls. And the Bloodborne franchise, and now those games are huge sellers. Everybody knows those names, and those games are now pinnacles that everyone compares. Oh, this game is Soulsborne. This game is like right. the, the you granddaddy. Know, what, yeah, whatever. It's a staple to compare stuff to. Exactly. I'm, I'm kind of hoping maybe that even as a remaster, maybe it's just exclusive to PlayStation for six months, a year. Like you just get it first. Maybe fingers crossed, because I know I kind of want to play it, but. If it was exclusive, I, I couldn't be mad at it because, I mean, that is where it started and that's where it came out first. But I hope that it's not because more people would get to enjoy it. Right, so, yeah, because mm-hmm. it's like the Final Fantasy. Square Enix eventually, you know, used to be exclusive with Sony. Now they're on all the platforms. Maybe this one eventually is going to time lapse on something and it finally can go cross-platform. But that is coming and it's a, if you want more hard games, there you go. Yeah, there it um, is. Another game that we did talk about a few episodes back, and it was kind of a light trailer. We didn't really know what to make of it outside of the concept, and it's two assassins stuck in a time loop, and for figuring out why they're there, what's going on. And so finally, a trailer that actually had quite a bit of time on it was Deathloop. Uh, This game's coming out with Bethesda and Arcane. It's the character Colt who's stuck in Black Reef. His concept is that he's 
getting killed time after time again. Mm -hmm. But every time he dies, he learns a little bit more piece of the puzzle. And we're learning that the overall arc is that he's got eight characters that he needs to kill by midnight. Um, and the, the trailer showed us a lot more. I mean, he's got guns. He's got moves. He's whipping up on top. He's jumping down. He's got disintegrating guns. You know, um, I didn't write down the other chick's name, but she's oh, one of the points that are... Did you get it? No. That was coming out and fighting him. We were saying it looked like it could be a two-player thing, but overall the game, what do you think? And then we can talk hypotheticals. I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, I like the concept of it, but again, what I'm more interested in is how that dynamic works. Are you playing as the chick or could someone else play against you? Because I think that would be even cooler is in you're both trying to eliminate whatever or someone's trying to stop you while you're trying to eliminate these people. I think it was very cool. I love the power where he's able to loop jump through stuff. Yeah. I love the yeah. fact that he's learning more as he's dying. I as soon as I saw it and he kept dying, I kept thinking of that uh, Returner game. Right, like, right. Returner? Yeah, yeah. Like, Returner, like, what are the similarities there? We're like, a lot like, of that we can learn more about the story and keep going. He had awesome powers. I, I just, I want to see how much involved the chick is going in against him. Well, I'm like, thinking if there is two people that need to be done, what if we see his trailer first? And then, then a few months later, we get her version That'd of be what pretty her cool, thing yeah. is. And That'd then it cool. is a two heads up um, concept. But overall, guys, it, it, it did look pretty cool. Um, the last one, Andrew, I'll let you jump in first, is we finally get the Resident Evil 8 Village trailer. Love it. <laughs> looks great. Looks scary. The vibe completely nailed it. Again, I'm kind of a little scared, especially coming off of like Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Remake, how I'm loving going back to this <laughs> third person over the shoulder as I'm playing, but it seems like this one is first person out. Again, you're Ethan, which is, or it seems like it's Ethan from Seven. Spoilers, Chris Redfield's there. But it almost has like a, a Resident Evil 4 vibes, except for turned to the max a lot darker, where it's like that kind of medieval ish, like Europe, especially those women oh, with like man, the dresses was, and the scared. castle. And then there's some like weird, like Wolfman style thing or whatever. So I don't know what's going on. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy, crazy. Either way, I'm really excited for it. I just am also scared for it too. But the same, <laughs> the same way I am for whatever new iteration is. But I loved Seven. I thought Seven was an absolutely great game. I know you went through and played it. Yeah, Seven um, was one of the games that Andrew reintroduced me. Kind of, I, I'm an old school Resident Evil fan on one and two, and maybe uh, yeah. old school three. Andrew got me back into Seven. Loved it. The moment I was watching this, um, I don't recognize Resident Evil stuff. The moment I see it, but as soon as the umbrella thing pops up, as soon as um, you know, you obviously see Chris and Ethan. I'm like, man. I, now I gotta play this game. This game's gonna scare the shit out of me because I don't do good with uh, horror games, but this is a must. And it's just weird. We're at the finally concept where Resident Evil is just snowballing back into our lives with all these remakes and these revamps and these these new introductions into it to where, um, you know, they're looking good. Yeah, in a good way. Yeah, I put a. Because, um, like I said, we're, I'm old school 1, 2, and 3. Haven't played anything since. I've watched some stuff. I think it's an excellent departure because we're so used to it in the city, the stuff, the cops. Go to a village, a small town. There's some scary shit, man. Like, there's an excellent scenario or, or landscape to do some really scary stuff with zombies, with werewolves. I mean, it just seems like um, a good way to do it. 2021, so it's not too too far away. Um, I think it's one, if I am going to jump back into one, I would definitely see myself jumping into this one. Yeah, I think that, again... Resident Evil 4 was a radical departure, and I felt like that I, that's what everyone holds is the pinnacle of the best Resident Evil. I don't think so now, especially with Resident Evil 2 or 3 make. But, again, there's some people who can't break that fixed camera angle that, again, it's going to turn heads no matter what. But either way, I'm excited for it. And they did post something afterwards that they're going to show more of that game in August. So I'm oh, really good. looking Looks forward good. to that. Yeah, and the more we get from that, the better. Now, did I miss Z8, or did that chick eat that dude's hand? I thought I, I, thought I saw one of them that she was coming down and like his hand was missing and she was like licking her lips. I was like, God damn. Uh, that Potato whole trailer things. was like out of control. I don't even know what's going on. Chris looks like he's like a villain or he's on some bad. sort of vendetta or something. Redfield did? He looked yeah. Oh, oh he's, he's very stout. Like he's but, eating like a mountain man. Oh, oh, I, I couldn't even tell it was him. He's brick shit house. <laughs> he is, man. <laughs> um, so almost done with this, guys. The last game that we caught, uh, again, coming out of Capcom, was Pragmata. Now, this is this futuristic futuristic game that didn't really show kind of gameplay it kind of showed just the concept of living in this weird twisted world you kind of see this in this interaction between this man and like a i want to call it a space suit and maybe the cybernetic girl who can kind of adapt with them but we were almost talking it almost looked like a i Hideo thought Kojima it was game. a Hideo so Kojima I thought it was looking game, yeah. just 
in that kind of vein to where it's weird enough. Uh, you get to see them kind of launch out into space. Next thing you know, they're sitting, I'm guessing it was the moon. They're looking out at Earth. I mean, I don't really know what the game's about. You, right, because the no cat walking tell. around. Um, I mean, there's no gameplay. The only I really like him shooting out the vine ball. Yeah, the cat yeah. walking around. There's some cool stuff, but there, there's no gameplay. We don't really know what it's about, but it looked, it looked good. Here's the thing about this thing. Every single game looked good. Nothing looked like dog shit. Like, every single game looks very, very good. This one's no exception. A lot of um, original no gameplay, looking stuff. But, yeah. I mean, it, it looks good. Yeah, and that yeah, that's how far out there... Yeah, I get a Very original. They're very different than anything Capcom, I think, has done recently. That I, I thought it was either, like... I, I don't know a sequel to the Stranding, but maybe, like, DLC or maybe Kojima's next game is what I thought it fucking was, especially based off that armor and everything it and how, our attention. how I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I thought for sure it was a Kojima game. Yeah, so check that one out. One, But, guys, the one that kind of definitely was the icing on the cake that everyone was looking forward to is we finally got to see the new Horizon. It had a really good length of a trailer on it. They gave it a name. It's the Forbidden West. This is a game by Guerrilla Games. Um, the original one came back out in 2000. 17 again so you're following Aloy and, the, and one of the interviews they were saying is this is like a far future west so you're starting to see a lot more organic life um take precedence in this game and you get to see a lot more of the, of the robotic enhanced kind of creatures that you see but again she's still on her mission her mission is that no one else is gonna stop whatever i know is coming and if i fail it's over so there's not there's not there's no boundary i won't cross there's no mountain i won't climb there's no this there's no that and it's just this aloy you can definitely tell has been through some shit and she's ready to do her mission and there was nothing about this trailer that i did not love and it wasn't so much gameplay that we even got to see it's just knowing that it's on its way and it definitely gave us a landscape of what this game is going to be about she was traveling everywhere so you know this game is going to be very broad in scope and not just stuck on one maybe particular island did say she's like the, going to like the Americas or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's what I The far she, future west of, of, of America. She, that's yeah. what I heard, yeah. Going west of America. And I love the fact that it seemed like underwater was a big part. Yeah, now of she's it. swimming she more. The, she has the thing on her mouth. You see those crocodile things swimming. She's going to like, they did a whole big thing of it, like a town or a city or something sunken. So I hope you get to explore underwater. I thought that was a really cool aspect yeah. of it. I think it's really cool to see when you give someone a chance, like a proper chance to actually do something different. Because Guerrilla Games for the longest time was known for nothing but kill zone. Right. And then yeah. they just took their chance and they made Horizon, which ended up being a one, you know, one of those games that a lot of people put Surprise it up there as a game of the year. Surprise absolute smash. So now that's something that everyone's dying for the sequel. Everyone's dying for more of this game. And it's all because they gave him a chance to breathe a little bit with the studio, gave him that room. And, you know, it's great to see them doing something like that. Yeah, so again, guys, that's just a handful of games that we just had the yeah. name. There's a ton more. I would highly recommend go back, check it out. See, I would watch it for sure. Yeah, yeah, see the things that we didn't talk about because there was a lot of, of good little things. But the way this thing ended, which was wow. kind of how everyone was hoping it was going to end, and I kind of, you kind of start seeing it in the show. Every time it kind of passed over from a game trailer to a game trailer, you kind of saw this white mold, mold yeah. coming around. At one point, the PS, you know, the controller popped up, and you were like, okay. And then you kind of got the brighter logo, and eventually they showed the PS5 in its entirety. Um, it's now they're going in this all white look, this very distinct look. Matches Gino, the controller. This very 360 look. <laughs> Gino, let's start with you. How did you first look at this? Um, what was your initial thoughts on the look for this? When it first popped up, I am my PS4 stands vertical anyway. I have a stand with the the air blow. So when it was standing vertical, I really liked it. It kind of looked like a Destiny helmet with it kind of flaring out. That's all how I took it. I love the white. It doesn't bother me at all. There, there's going to be other skins of this. So if the color pattern is wrong, you're going to get another version. So don't worry about that. Um, I really like the fact that they introduced it with the digital version of it because um, I don't buy discs anymore. So the fact that they're going to show both of them like that, I like it. Um, I really want their headset that they have because 3D audio is supposed to be a huge deal with the PS5. I really want to see if the headset that comes with it is is worth the hype. If it comes with it. If it comes with it. That's another thing. They didn't say if there's a bundle that came with everything. We, you kind of brought that up at, when we finished it. Um, my only drawback was, is if I had to make fun of it, it, it looked like a modem to me and we instantly saw a picture of that afterwards. So like, I get the, the, there's a flaw with or it. Or the person's fan. Yeah. It, no, the kind of it one. literally <laughs> looked like a modem to me, but, um, it, me, it doesn't matter. It looked sleek. It looked sexy. I don't mind the white. I, I I'm going to stand mine vertical anyway. 
We can do a quick plug is that I actually just reviewed a headset that actually supports 3D audio and would work on the PlayStation or PlayStation 5 like that. So if you're interested in looking for one, that might be it for you. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I thought looking at it, I thought it, was, I thought it was cool until they showed it. Like it, when it was in the dark <laughs> with just a blue yeah, light. Yeah, fine. But I actually kind of think that it's ugly, especially like with the weird shape and stuff. Uh -huh. So I'm not a fan of it. But personally, I wouldn't care anyways. Like it could be the ugliest fucking thing and it wouldn't matter to me because how often do I stare at it? It's sitting on a shelf, sometimes behind shit. I have stuff stacked on top of my Xbox right now as it is. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I really see it anyways that it doesn't matter. I just think it's... You stack stuff on your Xbox? I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. I've seen okay. it. Okay. I think it's just weird that I don't understand how this thing... Because someone posted a picture, and I don't know if it's real, that if there are people who want their consoles horizontal, I don't know how this thing's supposed to lie sideways. I, I could see it. I mean, that one side. I mean, even I feel you, like it just looks so weird. There's a, there's a swoon in it. You can, if we can call it that, a swoon With, in the on box. the disc version. Because here's other the one thing: you can see the PS5, and then it's in its shell, the white part that's over it. I mean, it can lean. It just doesn't look pleasing. Aesthetically it doesn't pleasing. look like because we're just used to a, a box format that look. If it's not straight, it doesn't look right to us. And it, if it's leaning on that right that side... That mostly is it. Is, it's it's definitely not going to look right. It's yeah. going to have this weird look. So I don't know if I grasp the concept of why they chose that design. But when I saw it, I was like, ooh, that looks sleek. That looks new. That looks impressing. Um, it looks advanced. Whether I mean, or not you like the white, which I think is going to be a lot of what is throwing people off of how we go on our fifth generation. We're going from all black to now white. That I think that's. I think this thing was doomed the moment it shot. You saw it. Xbox Series X come out with its thing, and it was a basic black, put it any way you want, it got dog shit on. PS5 comes out, it's got this interesting design that we don't even know what it looks like if it goes this way, it's going to get shit on. So, I mean, what, what, what do you want? I mean, you got one version that's that's old school block, you got a new version that, that's, that's looking different and uh, unique, mm -hmm. and either way, they're both going to get dogged on. I have my overall impression... Was that it looks fine? It's it's gonna do the job. That it's gonna do what we didn't well, really get into is um, it's the way they're showing it off comes with that stand. Like so, pedestal, so yeah. right. So what they should have done is show off one of those laid down, which yeah. would have answered a lot of our questions version, instantly. In something like that. Yeah. My side. bigger question is I, why are they showing off so many peripherals that came with this thing? Right. I get the headset, but I don't think that's a that's launching with it. But then it was showing off that it's got the, the remote the control sensors that you can get, which you know you can get. I get one for my Xbox. I think you have one for your PlayStation. I'm not getting the uh, the media remote. Yeah. Like, wh where are we bringing this thing back? And then they're showing off the camera, right? So I get that we want to get more into uh, streaming. But this is, and I don't want to call it a connect by any means, but do you need the camera to do a specific fun uh, mm -hmm. function that something else can't do? Do you need the it. do you need the media remote to do something? Because we've seen in the past that per uh, peripherals that don't necessarily make sense fail. And I, why would you want to go buy, you know, the hundred or so dollar camera and the sixty dollar remote to do what with that I can't do? Naturally, how people are already gaming. With my That's what I'm yeah. questioning. I'm hoping, like Xbox, they have a better, um, like... Because it is sleek. The thing is what? The thing is this big. Work. But yeah, it's meant for the streamer. That You could be a normal person, 12 years old, you got it for your birthday, you'll probably never need any of that. But if it's, it doesn't come with it, are you buying it separately? I think there's a certain audience that'll probably talk to you. We don't probably don't know that to the extreme right. yet. Or the specs on it that it mm -hmm. runs, because... I mean, if any, if any Twitch runner is running... Games. Their own camera. Yeah, then why would you change one. this? Might this. be a cheap version of someone who wants to get into streaming and hundred dollar peripheral versus buying a three hundred dollar setup. It might be a quick way to get into it, so you get your taste, and then it it'll elevate you from there. Yeah, I wish they would have done more on that camera. But it's the remotes what's throwing me off. That reminds I really, me of the old school I totally Xbox forgot remote. About the remote it reminds I me really of the old school Xbox remote. That you had to put in batteries in for to be your DVD remote, and that's what I'm just like, yeah. Unless it's going to be designed to like um, go in with some TV that it automatically syncs with or something, or something like something. that. A universal remote, maybe? I just didn't think there was going to be a digital version. I know everyone's been talking about like the <laughs> Xbox having a, There's a, a digital, digital version. <laughs> that I didn't see PlayStation following that trend either and having an all-digital version. That'd be and I'm really interested to see what the price gap is between those. Right, and, and this is their first entry in the digital, right? Xbox, Xbox is already doing... Digital with the sad, you know. You think a discharge is a hundred dollar difference? It could be. I would. Ten bucks at best. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Five hundred four ninety. So um, that is the PS Five, guys. It is out. We have seen it. Um, I'm sure in the next out in a while before this thing's out, we're gonna learn a lot more about what it came with. But guys, we still got a few more minutes, so let's just get into real quickly what we're playing.
Andrew, why don't you start us off? Sure, I would love for Gino to tell me what he's playing first. Oh, you, you know what? Me and the girl have actually been staying home more, so I've been watching TV more. So I've been jumping on the iPad and the laptop kind of while we're playing because my Xbox setup's in a whole separate game room. I've been jumping extremely back into Pokemon, the trading card game online, get my decks built up, uh, going through the challenge versus ladder, such so one. Craig just recently got me back in the Magic the Gathering arena, so I just re I redid my whole thing. We jumped arena'd? back. Arenaed. I just got re arena so I've literally just been playing Pokemon, Magic the Gathering arena, and Elder Scrolls online uh, when I have the chance to. But basically, I've been trying to stay uh, mobile. Came over here a couple times. We play side by side. Uh, that's it for me so far. I've been uh, I jumped into Ghost Recon Wildlands. I Christian oh, yeah. bought Come it for me like every night. But I think we got it like two years ago, and I just <laughs> never played it. My cousin hit me up the other day, like, "Hey, do you have this game? Do you want to jump in?" I'm like, sure, why not? I've got. I'm trying not to play anything until uh, The Last of Us Two, so I didn't want to jump into something too big. This turned out to be really fucking big as it is. I kind of like it more than The Division, though. I was gonna. I was just gonna ask you that. Did you like it better? No way. I. I in a way, I gotta watch you play it then. Stream I keep getting emails for division. You hit thirty, keep going, keep going. I'm like, ah. I do kind of keep going. I have some issues. <laughs> I in a way, with certain it. things like you, you get a gun, but it's not like an a, like a looter shooter where you get in all these different things. You find different guns around the world, and then you can use them in your setup and create your, like your own like little unique build yeah, that you're like going it. out into. I think what I'm just enjoying about it more is the enemies aren't bullet sponges because even if I'm like a low level going into the highest level place. They can they they can like one shot me or kill me, but if I'm stealthy strategic. going through with like a sniper rifle or something like that, just headshotting people and you know playing it strategically, then I can easily get through like the hardest place in the game. Who are you playing with? Give a shout out. Uh, AJ. Oh, he changed his name to uh, what? What did he change his name to? It's um. M Toboggan MD now. The Mantis <laughs> M Toboggan. I like Mantis Toboggan. More scraps for me. Oh, is he too? Yeah, yeah, it's just us two. I tried to get Christian in. He wasn't getting in on it. Try to get you. You were way past where I was jumping in. Well, you could have easily jumped in. We were like three missions. I I'm still waiting for my invite. Not too late. You don't have it. Game. I'll buy it right now. <laughs> um, excellent. Like Gino was saying, we've, I've been playing a lot of Magic the Gathering um, Arena. It's been rejuvenating to actually restart playing that. I know there's guys like Tim when they watch it, they're going to be like, well, fuck you. Why don't you come play Real Magic? Well, we're talking about getting we're back We're talking about it, it's, but it's this, is a nice, this is a nice set. thing to get back into. You got your dailies again. It's a nice thing to wake up in the morning, start playing. Um, I was hardcore not playing anything. I was telling Andrew, like, I was having just, like, remission. I was just like, dude, I, there's nothing I want to play. Um, so Magic was a good outlet. I've been playing um, The Escapist 2 with our buddy Gil on uh, the computer. I actually just bought the Command & Conquer Remember we talked about Ooh. it a few episodes ago. It was one of my riffs. I bought that whole collection. It was twenty yeah. bucks on Steam. So I, I what does it include? Everything. I'll show you after this. It's got all the Red Alerts, the original the, cut, the, cut, old school shitty cutscenes uh, of Seth? guys. I believe Seth said it. Yeah, okay. Red Alert. Yeah. So I just jumped back into that, <laughs> but I decided I'm actually going to. And I mean, when uh, um, Dying Light Two comes out, I'll obviously pause. But I'm gonna finish doing the Metro series. I like playing 2033. Exodus was I, great. I want to play Last Light. I started it. I want to do Last Light, and then my next one will be Exodus. And Exodus that's, was and good that's shit, been man. Fun, man. Because I started Yakuza. Couldn't I started playing Shadow of War. Oh, you, didn't, you couldn't get into. No, no, Yakuza? I, I could. I just it didn't. I didn't grab me. And I started playing Shadow of War. And I'm like, dude, I know I'm gonna love this game, but like, I don't. I don't want to get into this yet. And then I was like, well, what was I playing? I'm like, oh yeah, Metro. You yeah. Want to play it? I'm like, oh yeah, let me just get some gun. Let's go blow shit up. I don't really gotta follow the storyline too much. I can podcast so and listen. Alternate when we play so sixty hours. Just person. give you Kuzo a few hours. Like, I, it, I know, and I started. I got two achievements. Like, I started. I it took me zero. Four, it took me like four hours before I really grasped mm -hmm. it because that's like when you get through like your first. Well, I love when a game does that. <laughs> your first cutscene, like your first major <laughs> first boss fight, and that's when you see like how over the top and like that Japanese drama and stuff like that's when it really hits me. Nice. So guys. Jump in the comments. Let us know what you thought of the PS5 reveal, the future of gaming, arguably the most anticipated, arguably right now the best digital showcase we've seen. I mean, there's there's no the, the bar's been set as high there's as you've been. Gonna, no better showcase. Yeah. High, this is it's the bar. The best showcase this is the bar. Anything coming out after this, Ubisoft's got stuff coming out. I mean, it's gonna be you can't top it. But mimic it. Do things that show video after video after video. Do slight comments with commentary with creators and CEOs and, and, and content creators with it. But move on. Move to the next thing. And don't set expectation that's, that you're going to under-deliver on because this thing, 
didn't said any of that. Everyone just assumed, and we got so much out of this thing, and there's no mm-hmm. being mad at it. Hour and a half or so, I did not have a Good problem with it. Yeah, so, yeah, they just jumped into it, and that's what I love the most is just on to the next one, on to the next on one, none to, of that. And on to the next one, ended on a bang. Dilly dally, shilly shally. So yeah, jump in, guys. Let us know what you thought of it. Definitely let us know what you thought of the PS5, because that's obviously going to be the next conversation until probably the next two, three months, until we ain't hear any more. I think price point would be the next conversation that takes precedence over the look of the PS5. Um, jump in. Let us know what you're playing. We know that you know what we're playing. We'd love to know what you guys are playing. Make sure that you guys do the contest. Andrew and I, this is episode 48. Episode 49 will be the episode, your last entry. Make sure you go back to episode 44 to 49. Make sure you put hashtag quarantine gamer. Let us buy two of you a game of your choice under the initial price tag of 60 and do not make it a hard to find game. And make sure you are subscribed because again, we will pull names as we've done in the past that are not subscribed. Won't email you, won't tell you shit. You're just flat out lost, take your name. Over the trash, you're gone forever. And how do you get more of those? Get a family member to do it. Get a spouse to do it. Get a sibling to do it. Get your best friend to do it. The more chances you have in, guys, we are not a huge channel. Jump in here. You Pull up 30 of those comments. You will probably win. Let us buy it for you. Make sure you like it. Make sure you subscribe to it. Make sure you comment. But, guys, until next time, that is my brother, Gino Perales. That is the handsome Mendro Montemayor. And I am Craig Perales. Cheers. Thank you.